This is a benchtop Moxon vise. I've wanted to build one of these for a couple of years and I built it in my head 50 or 60 times and I'm gonna show you how I screwed it up. The vise consists of five parts. The movable jaw, the fixed jaw, the stabilizer bar, the platform, and the platform leg. And rather than bore you with the dimensions, I've left a link in the description for the plans. Let's get to building. I like to roughly break down all my material before I take it down to the final dimensions. I usually take my pieces and leave an extra inch on there for play and I will cut it down to the final size during the final dimensioning process. When the material is in its rough form, I like to use the bandsaw. I find it to be much safer than the table saw when I'm ripping down pieces. I also like to go wide on the pieces as well. This allows me some wiggle room in case there's some mistakes made or I find some defects in the material when I'm milling it up. Okay, so now we have our rough stock. I'm gonna take these over to the jointer and start jointing them and then planing them and then taking the table saw to cut them down to width. I got done milling the material and some of it's a little thinner than I had planned. The reason was because the material was like warped and bent and stuff, so I had to bring it down a little bit more to get it all perfectly square. What we have is this back leg needs to be flush with this vice piece. And to do that, we're gonna use a little referencing. So this is five and a half inches wide. We have not moved the fence. I'm gonna take this piece, which will be, because this needs to be five and a half inches minus the thickness of this. We're gonna take our mag stop here, put this here. We're gonna remove our piece, put that right up against there, lock it in place, remove this, and now we can rip down this back leg to exactly the thickness of this minus this material. And we're gonna do that right now. Everything is down to final dimensions, and now we're gonna make a quick panel uh, it's gonna be a quick, simple glue up with these two pieces here. Like I said, I did these out of nine inch wide pieces. They ended up being a little under an inch, which is, again, not a problem. Um, I'm gonna get these in clamps. So real fast, I love this glue roller. I, I think that one's from Woodcraft or something, but I got a cheapo one off of Amazon as well, and it works just the same. So these little rollers are really great, but you know what, I mean, finger works just as well, so. I always like to make sure that this joint is not starved. I like to make sure it's got a lot of good even glue surface. Some people like to glue up both sides. I don't think that's necessary as long as there's enough glue on the one side. I like to do a little quick rub. Kind of starts to engage the tackiness of the glue. I like to take these, and this doesn't need to be wrenched on. You don't need to like Godzilla these things together. It'll, uh, it's totally unnecessary. You just need the, the, the joint to be tight together, but not so tight you're uh, gonna be bending any metal or any wood or anything like that. You're just gonna add a bunch of stress to the wood that's not necessary. I like to add these clamps on the end. They're little calls to keep everything aligned. I am not using anything for alignment on this. You just saw I just threw glue on there and slapped it together. I just don't think it's necessary for a little tabletop panel like this. And then we're gonna get a couple more clamps on here. We already have good squeeze out. These last two clamps are gonna make it real even. There we go. Make sure everything's a little cinched. And this panel is ready to be set aside. We are now going to cut our pieces down to length. All of these pieces need to be down to 28 inches long. So I'm gonna get these going right now. I'm gonna cut this side first. We just got our pieces cut down to final length and now we're gonna start marking up for our mortises. So this is our back piece, this is the back of our back piece and this is the front of our front piece. We need to come, we're gonna get aligned to the center and then three and a half inches in on both of these. So the center of this at five and a half inches is gonna be two and three quarters of an inch, which I set here on my little, my little guide here. And then just to kind of check center, I'm gonna rotate it around, throw this line on here, see how close we're, 
It's dead nuts. We're good. That's dead center. So we're going to do the same thing on this one. And then we're going to set it to three and a half. I'm going to left you here, so I'm going to go a little crazy. And... That's our spot. Now that we've got our markup done, we're going to take the jaws over to the drill press and we're gonna do some through holes. The front jaws are gonna get a three quarter inch hole, but it's gonna be elongated an eighth inch on both sides from side to side, not up and down. The reason we want that is that when we're pulling the jaw away from the piece, if it gets ra any racking or binding, it'd be really hard to pull it out if it's just like a super tight hole. The elongated hole allows us to move it side to side and pull the piece off easily. It just gives us a little slop to move it off. The back jaw will have a perfect three quarter inch hole in it though. Uh, that will be done first and then we will mortise a hole for the nut that the bolt will be attached to on the back jaw. We're gonna take the eighth inch setup block here. We're gonna put this here, put that against that. And then now we have this piece, which will be our eighth inch to the left. And then we'll take our quarter inch setup block and then we'll have our eighth inch to the right. So now we're gonna drill these out and make some elongated holes. We are gonna make a mortise for this nut. And I already did the math over here because I forget things very quickly. So what we need is a square hole for this nut to sit in. And that hole is gonna be an inch and a quarter this way and one and nine thirty seconds this way. As you can see by my beautiful handwriting, we're gonna come in an inch, excuse me, two and a quarter inches from the top and bottom. So we're gonna strike a line here. I've already set to that. Okay, and then from the outside in, we need to come in two and three quarters of an inch. And we're gonna go like this. And then we're gonna come in from this side four and a quarter inches to get our other outside measurement. And that is what we need to get rid of right there. And this little mortise is gonna be 13 sixteenths of an inch deep. That is how thick this nut is. I just got the jaw that we're gonna mortise set up on the mortiser. If you don't have a mortiser, you could use the drill press and then clean it up with a chisel, or you could take a little piece of MDF and make a little template and use a templating bit to do the same thing. But I'm gonna do it because I have a mortiser and I think it's pretty fun. So what I did is I set the depth basically to zero and then I took some setup blocks. Again, I love these setup blocks. A three quarter inch and a 1 16th, which gets you 13 sixteenths. And that fits right in here to my depth stop and we're good to go. So we're gonna start mortising this out and uh, make some square holes. We got our mortise done on the mortiser. There, huh? And now we're gonna do a test fit with the hardware. So these go right in here. Let's see our nut fits. Nice. And this guy goes back here. Tightens on, pulls everything in real tight. Do the same thing on the other side. Get something for the nut to grab onto here. Okay. Neat. <laughs> grab our washer. Slap them on. Okay, so let's kind of test this piece on this uh, stabilizer bar here. There we go. Yes, perfect. All right, boom. We got ourselves a mini Moxon vise and it's working, which is perfect. So this is ready to go. We're gonna do some fit and finish stuff, but we're gonna jump over to this panel, get it cleaned up and get it ready to attach to the top here. And we're gonna attach the stabilizer bar as well. We're gonna be adding a heavy chamfer on the front face of the movable vise or movable jaw. Uh, that is gonna be for if I ever decide to do half blind dovetails, which I probably 
May? We'll see. But the point is, is I want to have this chamfer start six inches from this side and start six inches from this side. So what I did is I measured six inches over from both sides of the middle of the bit. I came out six inches. So what I can do is run this along here, stop it at that line. That'll stop me at six inches, come this way, same thing. So I'm gonna do that now. It'll probably take a two, three passes because I don't wanna take out the full depth of this chamfer right out of the gate because I could have a lot of problems. So I could have tear out, I could have chipping and can make the piece look really crappy and that's not what I want. So I'm gonna fire this up and get this chamfer going right now. We need to do the glue up now. We're gonna attach the stabilizer bar to the uh, fixed jaw. I, this is 36 inches, this is 28 inches. The difference is eight inches, divide that by two. You got four inches off either side. So I set this to four, brought it in from the side. And now I'm just gonna clamp this on here so I can mark it up. No, God, no, God, please, no. And I'm using this flat surface because it's gonna help with my pencil marks in a minute when I flip this over and we can put this right here. I've got the stabilizer bar where I want it for the layout. I'm gonna just put three marks on here for the domino. One there, eyeball center. And I'm putting these right above where the holes are for the hardware. Uh, let's glue this up real quick. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna get a nice even coat on here we did all the mortises with the domino. It really probably isn't necessary. I'm just trying to save myself some sanding is all. It isn't probably not necessary. It's 100% not necessary. I'm just bougie, so let's do this. I'm using tight bond three, gives us some decent open time. And it's kind of the main, main workhorse glue in the shop here. We use it all day long on a lot of interior projects, I like to use a tight bond speed set. The problem with that is, is the open time is extremely short and we need to uh, have some good open time for this because we're gonna be putting together a few joints, so. All right. Okay. So that one's good to go. So we're gonna go to this other side here, put this on its top, and we are gonna attach the top to here. So I'm gonna glue up this face, get some glue in that mortise for the domino tenon to hold on to. This is a little silicone br brush, these are great. The, drew, the glue dries, the drew glides, the dr glue dries, and then after like six hours, you can just pop all the glue off and it works real nicely. Need enough in there for it to create a nice bond. That's good. We're good. Okay. Glue that up. There's gonna be this this is actually gonna be holding a lot. I mean it's this is where we're gonna be clamping the piece to the workbench, so it actually does need a real good hold. Not that none of this does, but this one really you do want to make sure you get some. Some good glue face on this one, or glue uh, glue coverage on this one. Let's throw a few more on this one as well. Now 
I'm gonna be putting the cork on the fixed vise. So I'm gonna use this heavy duty spray adhesive. It's a multi-surface type of adhesive. Mask this off through some cardboard down and some masking tape. I tape this off because this stuff kind of gets all over the place and it's real messy and goopy. So I'm gonna spray this surface here, this fixed jaw, and one side of the cork stuff. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, cork medium or whatever. We're gonna spray one side of that, let it set up a minute, and then we're gonna clamp it all together and let it sit for about 10 minutes and then it'll be ready to go. Okay, according to my watch. <laughs> Our uh, timer's up on the clamps here. We gave it 10 minutes. I'm gonna pop this out. Let's see if the glue worked. I'm uh, a bit concerned about it. So hopefully I'm wrong. Nah, that's great. Never mind. I was hoping for a dramatic reveal and the whole thing would just peel off, but unfortunately I'm very good at this. No, I've never done this before. Let's cut this off. Let's see how this looks. I want dog holes on this, so I'm gonna put dog holes on this. I want to position them over the center of the holes, the through holes, and then we're gonna do them every three inches until it terminates off the end. These other holes, I'm gonna actually drill through the piece of wood, so a depth stop does not matter, but on this one and this one, we are gonna be drilling a stopped hole because we're not gonna go all the way through this piece of wood. I already set up the depth stop, so it's set for that already. I'm gonna drill that out right now, and then after that I can just turn off the, um, the, the, the depth stop, and we're gonna set up a block to stop any blowout. So we'll set that up next, but let's get going on this. Dog holes are in. Did a little chamfer around all of them so you can easily fit that in there. These depths were set correctly. That's good, because that would have been really embarrassing if I just put that in there and it was sticking up a sixteenth of an inch, but it didn't, it's good. So now I'm going to flip this over and we are going to attach the hardware. Why is my mind blanking right now? Uh oh. Did we do something wrong here? It's back here, but what is it? What did we do? Oh no! Is this go the other way? Yes, bro. No it. God Alright, so Pete just left. I just got done throwing some stuff. These square mortises are supposed to be on the other side of that piece of wood. <laughs> when I did my alignment and my markup to do the dominoes to attach this, <clears throat> I had this flipped around the wrong way. This hole, this square hole needs to be on the other side. And the best fix I can come up with is to plug it. I'm gonna plug it, I'm gonna cut this piece out. I'm gonna glue this in and fill the mortise and then we're gonna drill through and I'm gonna put a mortise on the other side. So I need to make a mortise for this nut on this face. So here, we're gonna put this here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a template with scrap. So we're gonna take this, so we get a nice 90 degree, or you know, nice reference here. This is our 90, so this is straight up and down. I'm gonna take this piece of scrap, and this, this piece of scrap, butt it up to that, butt this up to that, take that out, put this here, and then put this here. And now we have a perfect mortise template for that. 
So I'm gonna hold this in place with double-sided tape and uh, go to town on this with a uh, with my flush trim bit and a templating bit, or my my trim router and a templating bit. So now we have the perfect template to make our mortise pocket. Well, that was a fun adventure. Uh, this is all fixed now, so now we can get this hardware mounted and see how this thing looks. So I'm gonna set this nut here in that mortise that we made and then tighten this one on the back. Now, we're gonna put our movable jaw on here. Feed that on. Cool. Get some washers on. Get some handily thingies on here. These are our, uh, the technical term is uh, handle tighteners. You can look it up, it's got an own, its own Wikipedia page, it's pretty cool. All right, let's tighten up the vise. Yeah, that's nice. That is nice. That is nice and tight. That's a nice vise. <laughs> it's the worst. Anyway, let me get these bench dogs on real quick. Obviously this is to keep the uh, whole system in place while you're working on it because you're gonna be, in theory, doing some pretty heavy duty woodworking on here. So let's pull this out. 